Hi guys, it's Minx here. Welcome back to some more Corpse Party Blood Drive. Sorry there was not an episode yesterday, I had a lot of stuff going on. Drowned an attempt to drink from Bucket. Gear? Yeah? What is it? I don't know, did you just hear something? God, don't scare me like that. Sorry. What the hell? Okay, so guys, I'm on a level with you. I actually played the last five minutes and realised I wasn't recording, so I do kind of know what's happening here. And I'm probably gonna die, but, um... Yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, fucking hell, as you guys know. It's the pool! Probably the worst bit of the other game. The old pool. Definitely not a fan of this place. I can't remember it too clearly, but I didn't... I almost drowned in here before. Yeah, and I really don't want to go through that again. So let's not go any diving this time round, okay? Well, it's not like I want to be here. Hey, wait, I told you not to go off by yourself. Drowned after leaping into the pool. But they, they're, they're out the... What? Okay. Please don't jump in, Ayumi. The stone's indicating it's in the water. You serious? How can you possibly know that? Look, the closer I hold it to the water, the stronger it reacts. Yeah, but the water is filled with all kind of debris. There's no way we can get there to safe. There's no way we can get in there safely. I guess not. Sorry, guys. I was checking my sound actually was working there. Seems pretty important. Okay, so... I think we can use a board here. Well, I know we can, because I did it already. Gap's too wide to jump. There's got to be somewhere we can cross it, though. And we have a loose board, right? Yeah, we do, from the gym. Right, so... We're gonna... Look at this thing. Drowning pool, great. We're gonna head back round and just save our game very briefly. Again, I know that sounds silly, but it means we don't have to do all these cutscenes again when I invariably fuck up and die. Because I'm pretty sure, well, I know that the next the next chase sequence is pretty much a one-shot. So, uh, yeah. So let's save our game here. I'm assuming this doesn't cure darkening. Um, everyone has been on about the darkening on the portraits. I think we're going to be alright for this chapter. I don't think there's any need for us to, to like, uh, you know, like, go and cure our darkening or anything at this point. Because I triggered the final cutscenes before, so I know that this is nearly the end of the chapter. Let's just hope I don't fuck up massively here. Like, everyone was saying she teleports like she does. Like, this is just me tapping the thing. It's not the the game literally like runs like that. If you know what I mean. All right, here we go. I wonder if the key will work. Yes, it fits. Okay, we're going into the pump station. That sound. Okay, the pool water should be drained now. Let's check it out. I love the way they don't bother, like, making the pump station at all. Huh? What the hell is this? The pool water wasn't drained. Instead, it was frozen. Well, but how did this happen? Oh, 
God, seriously, just wait for me. Damn it, I swear. She's such an idiot. Whoa, it's slippery and it's ice? Holy shit, I never expected that to happen. Seriously, don't just... What? What's wrong? Look! Da -da -da -da. It's a thing. The centre of the frozen pool was lit up with large pink mass visible beneath the surrounding ice. It was impossible to tell exactly what the mass was, however, through the cloudiness of the frozen, muddied water... What is it? I don't know, a jellyfish? Or an octopus, maybe? Not that that would make any sense. This is where the charm is directing us, though. See? I see. What that? I got a bad feeling about this. Let's get out of here, Shinazaki. That's bad. Ah! Whoa. Ah! Shinazaki, can you swim? My feet whoa, 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 can't quite whoa. Grrr. <gasps> what was that? It's a monster. Who cares? Just swim over to me. Jesus Christ, Ayumi. What's wrong? Something touched me! There's something in the water! Oh, oh for fuck's sake. Okay, it's gonna be alright, okay? Grab onto my shoulders, but don't panic. If you apply too much pressure, we'll both drown. Okay. I did this last time. Whether I can do it or not on, on camera it remains to be seen. God, I'm so glad you learned to swim after almost drowning here before. What's going on? I'm not getting any closer. Yeah, it's bad, by the way. Bursting from the very centre of the pool, there were now large pink tendrils of flesh floating about, each one stained liberally with blood. God damn, like something out of a nightmare! Kishinimba began to tremble at the sight of this bizarre monstrosity. Though it probably had more to do with the fact that we were both now being pulled towards the centre of the pool by a sudden water current. You gotta be fucking kidding me! We gotta get to that ladder. Obviously. I mean, it's fairly obvious that you have to do that. Unfortunately, it's really fucking... I'm gonna be so dead. Because I can't fucking move! It's bullshit! So yeah, that's what we can expect from this sequence. Much dying, because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Wrong end? Shinazaki, where are you? Shinazaki! Oh! Through the murky waters I saw only fleeting glimpses of Kishinuma, and he saw only fleeting glimpses of me, with tentacles protruding through my chest and pulling me under. I've been completely impaled, multiple times in multiple places, and died virtually instantly as one of the giant squid's razor-like limbs penetrated my heart. Shinazaki, no please! God damn it! So I'll see you guys when I actually get out of the pool again. I managed to do it last time, but this time I couldn't fucking move for some reason. Awesome! I love your legs! They're great! That wasn't even a grid wrong end, that was just shit. Just shit. One second, guys. I will uh, be right back. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do this. Hopefully. Okay, guys, I think I've, I think I might have got it. Oh my god, come on. Come on, don't fuck with me. God damn it, come on! Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Go, 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 go! Yes! I fucking did it! That was so hard, guys. That creature's- guys, I don't know why- yeah, why were we sitting there with this thing approaching us like this? Yep, yeah, great. Absolutely wonderful. 10 out of 10, guys. Shinazaki! Damn it, let go of her! God damn it! For a moment, all hope seemed lost. Then all at once there was a flash, a brief shing, and the unmistakable squelch of metal slicing through meat. 
and an octopus's arm was severed. Ah! An ear-piercing sound echoed through the entire fenced-in area and the whole atmosphere suddenly changed. The water reverted to its normal muddy colour with the light, rain and wind subtly etching their usual patterns across the muck. <laughs> what just happened? Shinazaki, hey! You okay? I'm still alive, so I'm fine. Could have fooled me. I was clearly not fine, but Kishinuma's nervous laugh had a certain reassuring quality to it. Me too. Huh? Oh, Magari's here. At the poolside stood a strangely dressed girl brandishing an enormous scythe. Wearing fuck all. <laughs> There's nothing fine about either of you. Everything you're doing in here is reckless and foolish. I hope you're at least learning your lesson. K you! Who are... Pleasure to meet you, Ayumi Shinazaki. My name is Magari Mizuki. I'm an executive officer in the Martubas, and I just saved your life, luckily enough. You're the one who saved us? Thank you. Huh. Martubas? Are you referring to the secret society that call themselves Martubas Tomb? I didn't realize it actually existed. So what's your involvement here? How do you know about us? We're supposed to be a secret society! Yeah, well, Shinazaki's an expert on old urban legends and stuff. Not much she doesn't know. Magari glared at Kishinuma for a moment with an ice-cold expression. You groped my boobs, you bastard! Once I kill Masuto, you're next! What the hell are you talking about? I didn't grope a damn thing! Don't listen to her, Shinazaki! I mean, look, I'm sorry I latched onto you, but I needed to come here in order to protect her, no matter what. You're wasting your time protecting someone like her. The hell gives you the right to say that. Magari ignored Kishinuma's question completely and turned her attention to me. You weren't able to attain the Book of Shadows here, were you? I was assured you had the ability to return the Nirvana back into the book, so I've been helping you out from behind the scenes. What? You have... This revelation seemed to instantly calm Kishinuma's rage. I don't have it, but that's because I was tricked. You don't have the book. The means are irrelevant. All I care about is the end, and you've failed miserably. You've wasted my time. You're completely worthless. Ah! So this is one of the crystals of the six demons, is it? It's blue, so that would make it the Sephiroth of Mercy. So you want to know who I am, do you? Yeah. Well, then once again, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm your enemy. Magari took the glowing stone and attached it to her necklace. Hey! If you keep on following that fucking Yagoro Misoto's orders, make sure you're prepared to die. I'll be taking this. You see all those red letters everywhere? You have no idea just how big a curse you're messing with here. So don't stir up the Nirvana any more than you already have. Curse? What are you talking about? Please, give it back. That bitch! This is really bad. What do we do now? Whatever we do, we have to catch her or we can't get home. Shinazaki, stay indoors. I'll be back. Wait. Kishinuma, I'm going with you. Things are not over yet. Things are not over at all. Kishinuma, where did he go? Okay, we need to save our game here. 
and prepare for more bullshit. Uh, I'll be glad when this act is over. I can't believe I had to redo all this. I failed much more redoing it than I did the first time, which sucks. So here we go. I haven't seen any traces of Aiko or Misuto either. That door really scares me. Huh? This is bad. This is super fucking bad. Oh, hi. That's... It was the enormous man I'd seen passing out when I first arrived here in this new heavenly host. That giant who stood before me wore a steel helmet that was splattered with blood all over his body. He swung his giant axe at me. Its blade alone was easily the size of a human body. I dodged his swing, but the floor of the school where it struck was utterly destroyed on impact. If that thing had hit me, there'd been no chance of survival. I could have survived for 60 seconds, guys. Oh my god, I didn't mean to go near the door. So there's two of them, which obviously is a major problem. I think every door we go near, maybe summons another one. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. I didn't even mean to go in that door. How my life? This has got to be 60 seconds by now, right? I'm alive. Got, I, I'm alive. I got hit, but I'm alive. I got hit twice, actually. Let's heal up while we can. <sighs> Fucking hell. I'm going to use all my bandages. Bandage it up! We got three of the stones still, I think, right? Even though Bitchface ran off with the rest. <laughs> I did it! Fucking awesome. Well. I guess the ghosties are gone. What's happening? Kishinuma, where are you? I hate this. It was Misuto. Hey, hard at work, huh? I can't take this anymore. I got separated from my friend, and all I want to do is go home. Man, your endurance is shit, isn't it? You don't have to talk to me like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, there are only two pillars left, right? Each time you break the seal on one of them, I can feel it. I can feel the Nirvana's energy wavering. That's how I know you're hard at work and doing your best. A sudden and, ambigu a sudden and ambiguously genuine compliment like that from Misuto, of all people, reassured me more than it probably should have done. I began to get misty-eyed. One of them was taken by a girl named Megari, though. Megari Mizuki, huh? Things haven't been going as planned for her, so I bet she's pissed as hell right now. I wouldn't worry too much, though. She's after the same thing we are, so she'll show up again to try and get the other crystals. And when she does, we can nab the one she took. Okay. So, uh, just keep going on, I guess. I'm in what looks to be the core of the school, so I'm going to do a little digging of my own. Trust me, we'll find each other, and then we do. And when we do, we'll get the hell out of here together. Alright, I'll do the best I can. That's a good girl. I can fucking trust him. He's fucking shady as fucking all fuck. Except Masuto was actually taking talk 
except Misuto was actually talking to me from back home. He was standing on top of the jungle gym during the entire conversation to be exact. He was letting me do the dirty work while he used the Ever After Stones to jump back to the real world on his own. There was no way I could have known that. I'd resolve to be soldier onwards and unlock the remaining pillars, truly believing that Masuto would swoop in and save me in the end. We'll fight our way back to reality together, Yuyumi. As he stared intently at the black sphere in the sky, a creepy smile spread across Masuto's lips. And in his hand he held a thick, black, hard-bound tome that bore a striking resemblance to the Book of Shadows. Heh, who'd have guessed the old man's manuscript could come in handy in a place like this? If there's no Book of Shadows in there, I'll just have to make my own. So, um, yeah, he's a cunt, as we all knew already. Everyone except Ayumi knew he was a cunt. And that's chapter 4 complete, finally. And we will now do extra chapter 3. I think that's the goal here. And let's try and get this all in one video. The Unconceding is Blood Drive Extra Chapter 3. What do you want? You're a real pain in the ass. You know that? Huh? Did you just say that? What I think you said, you bastard. And always with that same smug look on your face. I'll never lose to the likes of you. You hear me? Never. Despite the oppressive summer heat, there was just something about a momentary breeze blowing through the hallway that always struck me as kind of lonely. The window was open only 10 centimetres, but with the weather system rolling in, that was more than enough to cool the place down pretty well. I squinted my eyes as I looked outside, enjoying this moment of rest while I could. My name's Kai Shimada. I commute to Bayakuden Senior High School by day, and model for Men's Muckle Buckle by night. Men's Buckle is a men's fashion magazine you can find on the shelf in most any bookstore. There are a bunch of high schoolers who model for them, but I'm kind of in a class of my own. I'm basically their standalone charisma model. Their monthly sales go up by like 10,000 whenever I'm on the cover, naturally. Needless to say, I ain't got no problem with women, and I ain't got no problems with money. Plus, I'm strong in fights, so I guess you could say I'm like Mr. Perfect, a real renaissance man. But even an Adonis like me ain't got it that easy. There's one guy who just pushes my buttons every time I see him, and that guy is none other than... Suddenly I fell forward as if I'd been shot from behind. Huh? Did I just walk into something? Fucker acknowledged what he did, but just barely. He didn't even slow down, he just kept on walking like he bumped a potted plant in passing. <sighs> hey, hold up you bastard! It actually did hurt. It hurt a lot. I yelled after him at the top of my lungs. But he either didn't notice or didn't care. And whichever it was, it pissed me off. Tch, damn it! His name is Yuya Kazami. He's way bigger than he has any right to be, and I wouldn't hesitate to call him my mortal enemy. I've called him out time and time again, but got beat on every occasion. To date, he's the only dude I've never actually been able to win against. Guess you just can't win when you're fighting someone with no standards. Or so I like to tell myself, but there are only so many times a guy can be humiliated before he's just got to win. I don't care what kind of underhand tactics I've got to use, I plan on making him kneel before me. In order to guarantee my victory, though, I'm going to need to dig up some dirt on him. I considered my options as I entered the stairwell. Two classmates of mine were there, Ryusuke Katayama and Tomohiro Okahawa. They were talking video games, which was nothing new. What type is your Topibon again? A fire type that's weak to water. What about yours, Ryusuke? Exactly same. Man, doesn't anyone around here have any ground types? Weak? What's he weak to? That's it! All I gotta do is exploit his weaknesses. He's gotta have one. But wait, what type is he? Serial killer type? I thought about it for a moment and then decided what the hell did it matter, and I began to laugh like a maniac. Everyone's quite surprised by that. I can win, I can beat him. This time I'll beat the shit out of him for sure. Katayama and Hokawa looked at me like I was dancing skeleton or something, but what the fuck did I care what they thought of me? I was feeling great. That was Shimada, right? 
I'll never understand that boy. And so I set off to find the deadpan douche's weakness. Gaia had whispered in my ear that victory is at hand. Come on, hurry up. We're going to lose our spots if we don't get there right away. So stop being a slow eater. How about you stop complaining and just pick up the pace? That hurt. Who the hell? He looked like he was going to flip out, but as soon as he saw me, he calmed down real quick. Now he's probably asking himself, why wasn't I watching where I was going? A cold chill ran down his back, and all I had to do was glare at him. Heh. He shriveled back. Shima! The fuck's your deal? Bumping into somebody who's even so much as an apology? You got some balls, kid. I grabbed him by the front of the shirt and tilted my head forward. Oh, for fuck's sake, it skipped. <sighs> so if you're in a hurry, you don't need to apologise for bumping into someone? I learned something new today. Does that mean if I beat the shit out of you and say it was in a hurry, I don't need to apologise for it? Everywhere you look, it's all people acting like bitches. That's why I always hate coming here during the day. Nothing but yokels getting worked up over fuck all. Man, I'm beat. That shoot ran way too long last night. Can't believe I missed the last train. Feels like I didn't get any sleep at all. I'm so fucking tired. As I lazily stumbled through the hall, I came upon three girls who were laughing and talking and just yucking it up and blocking the way. They didn't seem to notice me, though. That's Shimada. Not only does he model, but he's just got that cool cat style in general, you know? Huh? But he falls around all the time. May seem kind of creepy if you ask me. I heard he's mistreated some of his girlfriends pretty badly, too. I'm totally a Kazami girl myself. He's smart, tall, and way more mature than any of the other guys around here. Right on, sister. He doesn't say a whole lot, but it's actually part of his charm. Yeah, I'm right there with you. If someone asked me to choose between Kazami or Shimada, I'd be Kazami all the way. What? But didn't you just call Shimada a cool cat? Not a person. I meant in terms of looks. I could never go out with a narcissist like that. I can't even imagine someone getting seriously into him. You're so mean. Wouldn't it be kind of cool, though, if he got into a relationship and it turned out the girl was just using him? Now that is super mean. He would do so much better if he never opened his mouth, though. He should just shut up and look good, and then everything would be A-OK. -okay. For serious, Shimada's a real bad egg. Stinky as they come. Shh. Hey, I'm hearing every word of this, you bitches. Eek! Don't be talking up your shit here, you filthy whores. Wow, he's scary. Wash your mouth. That's why everyone hates. You talking back to me, you twiggy little shit? Who's everybody? Come on, out with it. Let's go, okay? Okay. Why is somebody like that in Bayukadun in the first place? We're a cunt as well. The girls took off faster than they probably ever rubbed before in their lives. Damn pussies. I'm fucking super pissed off now. Bayukadun Senior High School. After the war, in an effort to help push internationalization and economic growth, an educational institute was built here as a sister school to Voltine Academy in Austria. Initially, it was an all-boys school strictly attended by sons of affluent families, but it's since gone co-ed and relaxed its hoity-toity acceptance requirements. Thanks to its history and enduring reputation, though, it's still largely a den of well-behaved goody two-shoeses, so I'm kind of the odd man out in my way. And that's fine by me. Alright, let's see what I can dig up. Um, which one should we go for? Mm, let's go to the student council room. Misuki, did the budget application from the Rakugo style comedy research club come in yet? Not yet. If they don't submit it soon, they're going to be hell to pay. No kidding. I should have a word with them. I turned back to my monitor and continued typing. This work wasn't going to do itself. Meanwhile, Mitsuki was busily checking out each of the thick file folders on each of the document shelves, and she wasn't missing a beat either. The club president is always so slow, and he's always making excuses about it. That's fitting, I suppose. Anyone who does Rakugo has to be a master of speech in order to pull it off. Mitsuki stopped what she was doing at this and just stared at me. I could feel her eyes burning into my head, so I stopped what I was doing and stared back at her. What is it? I was just thinking, if you told me you did Rakugo yourself, I don't think I'd be the least bit surprised. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming out, you know. When the times change, a lot of other things can change with them. They say songs reflect the era, and the era shifts as popular music shifts. But when I see a girl I thought was cute back in that day, walking down the road with her granddaughter, all I can think is, who cares about the music? 
How did I get so old? What? Why? What kind of image do you have of me? I just think you look good in a kimono. That's all. What, is there something wrong with that? I tried to play it off. I didn't want to deal with whatever implications there may have been here. If there were any at all. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Alright then. You also strike me as a kind of father figure in a way. That traumatised him. A, a father figure? For Cory, hello! Is something wrong? Mitsuki waved her hand back and forth in front of my face. I'm, I'm a father figure? Well, you're real level-headedness for a high school student, and you're always either reading or doing crossword puzzles in your spare time. Those are traits you find more often in someone's dad commuting to work than you do in a high school student, don't you think? That may be true, but, but Mitsuki, do I truly come across as such an old man? That's what I've been trying to tell you! He's been devastated. So that's it then. That's how it is. Just kidding! You may have the hobbies of a middle-aged man, but you're a wandering, caring, and reliable high school student council president where it counts. Mitsuki... Thank goodness. I've became the class dad. I don't know what... I don't know how I'd be able to live with myself. Wait. Actually, if I may ask, has anything bad happened to you recently? Not that I can think of. Why? Well, it's probably nothing, but you just seem depressed lately from time to time. Out of sorts, I suppose. If I don't know what to talk about it, that's fine. But if you ever do want to talk about anything, I hope you know I'm here for you. Thank you, Fukuroi. Fukuroi, is that his name? That's what I mean about you being a wonderfully caring... About you being wonderfully caring. Well, I am your father, after all. And that's what I like about you. Uh, you know, Mitsuki, I, uh... Vakura, I got something to ask you. Oh, and you're here too, Yamato? Perfect. I need a... Hey, what's wrong? As if you weren't distasteful enough to begin with, interrupting this tender moment with Misuki clearly did nothing to endear him to me. <sighs> Kai, you know... What's got in you in such a pissy mood? Actually, scratch that. I don't care. I need to ask you something. What is it? I'm actually thinking of inviting Kazami to hang out, but I want to know what sort of things he doesn't like so I can, uh, avoid them. Something Kazami dislikes. Let's see. I can't say I know of a single thing off the top of my head. I guess when he had to help out Kurosaki with his part-time job, he looked rather unsettled. Part-time job, huh? What kind of job was it? It was at Tenjin Highlands Frightful Labyrinth School, if I recall. I believe he was... Wait just a minute here. Shimada, you've got a serious grudge against Kazami, right? And now you're inviting him to hang out? Something smells really fishy here. I heard that. Caught you red-handed, didn't I? I didn't say nothing. You made a noise about your plan to set him up again, aren't you? Now, Mitsuki, let's not get carried away. That's right, Yamato. It'll give you wrinkles on that perfect forehead. Which will do no favours to your beautiful face. Though I do still love the way you look when you're angry. Shimada sneaked a quick kiss on Mitsuki's left cheek. You... Oh my god, they're freaking... <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Ah! <laughs> That's enough, Vakore. Shimada then flashed Mitsuki a smirk and turned heel. Hmm, about time I was on my way. Laters! Wait, Kai, hold! You are so not getting away. Calm down, Mitsuki. Drop the chair. Drop the chair! I heard Mitsuki's fury erupting from behind the door, but paid it no heed and just walked out of the student council room. I got what I came for. Mr. Frightful Labyrinth. So this is how they... These guys... These guys are the guys that they find mostly dead in the school in the first game. I think Kazami's killed many of them. Um, and I guess this is how they end up there? Because Kazami hangs out with Yuka, right, for a big chunk of the first game. Alright, good to go now. I just gotta confront him. Speak of the devil, squinting my eyes, I could just make out Kazami walking a little ways ahead of me. Guess this is my lucky day. Yo, hey, Mr. Emo. Going home by yourself again? How sad. Hey, listen to me when I'm talking to you. Are you deaf? Stop, Kazami. He was completely ignoring me, but I was bound and determined to get his attention. I started yelling at the top of my lungs. Finally, the usual expression of Kazami turned around and he actually looked annoyed as hell with me. Good. What do you want? Don't be sighing. 
when you're looking at someone. When I got prey in my sights, I'm not that kind of guy who lets it get away. So it's your own damn fault for ignoring me the first time. Am I your prey then? You seen anyone else here, pretty boy? Oh ho. I'm different today, Kazami. I'm ready for you. Let's settle this right here and right now. I stand alone, beaten by the cold wind, and that's the way I like it. It's perfect. I'm perfect, and you're going to regret you ever cross me. Hey. What do you want? You're a real pain in the ass. You know that? Huh. Did you say what I think you said, you bastard? And always with the same smug look on your face. I'll never lose to the likes of you, you hear me? Never! I don't know, we're having a flashback to fucking Kazami again. What the fuck? I'm always gonna be alone, huh? Well, that's fine. As long as I'm always on top. As long as I never lose to anybody else. Not anybody. Okay. That was a bit weird. Hey, hello? Yo, you listening, Kazami? Is that so? Is that so? Fuck you! What the hell are you laughing at? Don't you be making a fool out of me, you jackass. It's not my intention to make a fool out of you. I don't get you, man. You think you can always just play it cool and people like me will look the other way? Eat some of this. Once upon a time, there were three young boys who snuck into a deserted house. Huh? What's this all about now? Just shut up and listen. The house had a thatched roof and had been totally empty for decades. The floors were all patched up with boards, the walls were in shambles, and there were tons of dust on top of the scattered broken furniture the former owners had left behind. Once they got inside, the kids split up. One went to the kitchen, while the other one went to the bedroom, and the third went to go check out an old shogi board he'd seen in the living room. He quietly swept off the dust from the board with his sleeve, and that's when he noticed the red and black spots all over it. They were bloodstains. He gasped. His pulse was racing and his breathing turned erratic. He couldn't look at it anymore. He averted his eyes, looking up instead where he saw a rope hanging from a ceiling beam with a loop tied to the end that hung down. This made him weak in the knees and he couldn't bear to look at it anymore, so he averted his eyes again, this time looking down. And how he missed this before? There, right beneath his field of vision, lay a rusty knife with red and black stains on the blade. He screamed, absolutely terrified, and his friends quickly ran into the room to see what was the matter. It didn't take them nearly as long to notice the bloody shogi board, the noose, and the rusty covered knife, at which point they froze in fear too. After a few moments in stunned silence, a creaking sound resonated from somewhere above their heads. The three of them looked up in unison, all terrified. The rope hanging from the ceiling began moving on its own, spinning in a wide circular motion. For a second, their minds all went blank. Then they just scrambled at once to get the hell out of there, tripping over anything and everything that stood between them and the door. Safely outside, they thought they were finally out of the woods. But then, crash! The deserted old house made an awful sound and collapsed in on itself before their eyes. They were shaking hard by this point and they were all like, let's get far away from here. Now! But just as they turned to leave, they heard one last sound come from the ruins of the old house. It was the sound of that old rope creaking, creaking as it swung. And? And? And it was otherworldly, so it was creepy as fuck. I see. That's it? You're not scared? Come on, dude, freak out! You seem to be easily amused. Oh, stuff it. Shit, this isn't working at all. I have no choice, I've got to fall back. You win this round, but I'll be back, you hear me? Don't you dare think you've seen the last of me. And with that, off I went. It was a weird little exchange, wasn't it? Yesterday was a huge pain in the ass. Does this guy even have a weakness, or is he, like, totally infallible? Now, there has to be something that bothers him. It's impossible for there not to be. And I need to settle the score. Depressed and determined, I went to the student council room. <sighs> Anybody home? And of course, when I opened the door, who should I see but Kazami? He placed a chair by the window and his eyes closed. But for some reason, his forehead was all scrunched up like he was trying to think of something. When I called out, Kazami opened his eyes and gave me a sharp glare. It was actually kind of intimidating, though I'd never say that to his face. Nonetheless, I backed off a little. What the hell? You want to go, huh? 
Okay, how many times have I told you not to stir up trouble in the student council room? <sighs> Why's the door open? Whoa, did I come at a bad time or something? We all turned our attention towards Kurosaki. No, Kurosaki, you came at just at the right moment. Seriously, sure seems like a bad timing to me. There's totally a chill in the air here. It's from those two. They don't talk about us like we're plagued or something. So, Kurosaki, what can I help you with? Oh yeah, I thought maybe we could try all of this together. What? Is that... Yep, the infamous R2 Yakisoba bread. It's usually sold out, but I managed to get my hands on some today. And I was thinking it might be fun for us to try our luck. It was actually written like R squared and stood for Russian roulette. There were small bread bites covered in fried soba noodles. Only a few packs were produced each day, and for every 20 pieces, five of them at random were secretly infused with red hot chili sauce. Strangely, this made it a real hit item. Isn't that supposed to be some kind of dangerous, though? Like to the extent that people have actually passed out from it? Those are just silly rumours. If we were really capable of knocking people out, they would have stopped selling it a long time ago, don't you think? That is true. Oh, but you're not as good with these, are you, Kazami? So I guess it'll be me, Fukuroi, and Shimada. Oh, no way! You're not going to get in this too, Kazami? R2's super rare after all. You can't not eat it when you got it. I know, since we got this rare opportunity, how about we continue what we started last night, you and me? You're not going to back down from a challenge, are you? You're certainly persistent. You're damn straight I am, you fuck! I ain't got to go down a loser, I'm nobody's bitch. We're going to settle this score right now, once and for all, with this R2 Yakisoba bread. But it'd be kind of boring to try out our luck here and be done with it. What do you say we put something on the line? If you win, let's see. How about I give you a cover spread on the next issue of Men's Buckle? But if you lose, you're going to bow before me and admit you're a loser. Alright? I accept those terms. Hey, Kazami! Kurosaki, hand it over. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Kurosaki, Kazami, Fukuroi and I each took a piece of bread from the wrapper. You all ready? You bet. Just say the word. Why do I have to be a part of this again? On three. One. Two. I guess Shimada got the thing. Looks like Shimada hit the jackpot. Are you alright, Kai? Mmm. That was one of the chili pieces alright. I did my best to hold in my screams, but there was only so much I could do. Something had to give. It was tough not spitting it out, but I had to show these shitheads that I could handle a little spice. You bought this on yourself, you know. Here, drink some tea. I snatched the bottle from Kurosaki and chugged it down wholesale. Shimada, you're all teary-eyed. You okay? I'm not crying. Really, but your eyes. I said I'm not crying. Alright, alright already. No need to be a blown gasket. Looks like I win. Why do I have to be the only guy to get a hot piece, damn it? All my sources say there'd be extra noodles on the ones with the chilli sauce. Was that just smoke up my ass? As I continued to mull over where I went wrong, Kurizaki got this concerned look on his face. He was staring at Kazami, who had suddenly gone real still. Hey, you're alright, Kazami. Why wouldn't I be? Well, you're bothered by parsley, right? See, this is what happens when you push yourself. You don't look so hot. Parsley? Gah, crap. Kurosaki cupped his hands over his mouth and Kazami shot him a hell of a glare. So that's it. Your weakness is parsley? Parsley? That's so lame. I may have taken some blows from the chilli sauce, but you took some heavy hits yourself from the parsley. So I say this match is a draw. That's absurd. What's absurd about it, you bastard? I don't lose. I can't. It's not possible. Damn it, not now. Yeah, yeah, sure I can. Okay, see you soon. What was that? You have work? Yeah, I'm getting called in for some gig that just came up. So I guess we'll have to settle this another day. That's not how it works. Withdrawing from the challenge is tantamount to losing. No fucking way. It's from the third party interference, it don't count. So any loss on my part is null and void. I can't help it if I'm busy, I'm popular. So I'm out of here. No matter how much work you've got, Kai. Just don't push yourself too hard. Remember, you're a student first. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Speaking of it, if there's anything in the wings, Mr. President, I'll be sure to follow up. But for now, I'm off. Later! Loser. The hell you just say? Well, here we go again. Kazami can be a real sore loser. 
You two, if you're gonna fight, take it outside! Fakoro is basically face bombing, but me, I was ready to rip Kazami a new one. You really boil my blood, you motherfucker! I just wanna puke when I see your face! I could say the same to you. You're a mongrel. All bark, no bites. You little. Who the fuck are you calling a mongrel? I can't let you get away with that shit. I don't give a fuck if you cry like a punk ass bitch. You're mine! All I hear is barking. I'll show you barking, you bastard! Let's go! One more time! Fine, I'll be happy to show you which one of us is stronger. You're on. You're going down! I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, you brain dead fucker! Hey, Kurosaki, go buy us some Ed Bregg. What? Me? Oh my god, really? Really? Hey, hey, did you see this month's issue of Men's Buckle? Huh? Not yet. Why? I saw this when I was walking past the bookstore yesterday. Yuya's on the front cover. Isn't that amazing? What? Why Kazami? Oh, I can answer that. For whatever reason, Shimada and Yuya went to test their luck, or to be more accurate, they, along with Masuto and Kensuka, decided to take the R2 Yaki Cyber Bread Challenge. But when they couldn't agree on a victor, Yuya and Shimada had an egg bread speed eating contest. And as usual, Shimada bowed her early. The difference is, this time round, they put something on the line. The right to be the cover model for this month's issue of Men's Buckle. That does sound like Shimada. I could easily see him making a wager like that without, make, without thinking it through. He never thinks anything through, but I have to admit, I'm really grateful for it this time. Thank you, Shimada. Kind of surprising the publisher would allow someone with no modeling experience to be their cover model, though. Well, he's Bikudin's well-rounded well man. So I guess he lost again. That was like a comedy little skit, really, wasn't it? His cover short brought sales up by 30,000 copies, apparently. Was the sky always this big and blue? Honestly, I never expected he'd actually be able to join me for the shoot after I lost the bet. But both the editor and the cameraman gave the okay without a second thought. I mean, fuck. What is he? This sucks. Wait, wait just a minute. I'm the charisma model here. I ain't got time to sulk. I won't lose to that dipwad. No way, no how. In fact, the battle's only just begun. I have Gaia on my side. Next time I'll have him begging for mercy. You better be ready for me, Kazami. Good for him. Did you hear a thoroughly disturbing laugh? I sure did. Never a dull moment with Shimada around, is there? Just another peaceful day here at Bayukadan. This is like surreal. Especially considering how serious this gets. This is like comic book levels. And that was the end of the chapter. So this is presumably the story of how that Bayukadan group end up in Heavenly Host, the original, and how Kazami ends up killing all of them. I think he kills all of them. Maybe he doesn't kill them all, maybe like the ghosts get some of the girls and stuff, I can't remember, but we, we, you see their bodies at various intervals in the first game. But anyway, that was uh, Extra Chapter 3. We'll move on with Chapter 5 next time. I hope you enjoyed this video of Corpse Party Blood Drive. If you did, put a like down there and let me know what you thought of the game so far in the comment section. There'll be more to come. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.